Hi, this is Jim Gibson with CableSupply.com, and I got a product that if you're doing cabling, electrician, or if you're a low voltage cabler, of course I'm a low voltage cabler, I love this, you're going to like this product. And I don't know if I've ever told you this before, but this is a fiberglass. Of course it's green because it's from Greenlee, right? Green, green fiberglass, everything else. Very flexible, it's better than the metal ones. And if you're an electrician and you're pushing through conduit, and you got a metal one, well, it could create problems if you're not careful. But this is a um, 100 foot uh, cable. We sell them. It's fiberglass. They last a long time. They are repairable when they break. And unlike the metal, the metal does not break. It does bend and get kinks in it, but it does not break. This is a fantastic, fantastic um, thing. And it's great for going long hauls through conduit from one end to another. Okay, we just got done talking about the fiberglass one, uh, but we also have nylon. And this nylon one, and these little um, hook and loop things are just fantastic. I use them all the time, uh, and we do sell them. Um, what the thing I like about the hook and loop is the leader. It's real flexible, and it's a lot thinner than, oh man, that's a mess. Okay, a lot thinner than the fiberglass push rod. You see the difference in thickness, uh, which means it's a lot more flexible. But this has its purpose, and the nylon one has its purpose. And you ever, you know, when you're cabling, now cabling guys are going to know this, and the electrician going to know this. There's a thing called a stub out, and that's where they take the conduit, and it's cut at the ceiling, and it's usually just stubbed with, a, with an angle on it like that, right? And it goes down the wall and then it ends at the low voltage box. So I'm talking about low voltage now, okay? So low voltage boxes, remember, are not like 110 boxes. 110 boxes by code have to be in a box. Uh, low voltage does not uh, because it's low voltage. There's not a possibility of a fire. But I'm sure someone's going to email me and tell me one situation in the world where it may have created a fire. I'm sorry, I'd be happy to hear that on my video uh, comments. Uh, I have never seen it, and by code you don't have to put a box in the back, okay? So the nylon one works great on that case. You just push it in, and it goes up, and you go on top of your ladder, or you got a guy on top of the ladder, or anything else, he's going to attach the cable to it, it goes right through here, going to pull it down. Remember, you always pull cable, you never push cable. So when you see people with fish rods, which we'll talk about later, not on this video, but you see people with fish rods and they put the cable at the end of the rod and they're pushing the cable. That's probably because they've never done cabling in their whole life. Uh, it's kind of silly looking too. You always pull cable. It's like, you know, you put spaghetti on a piece of table. You can keep it straight as long as you pull it. If you try to push it, it kind of like wiggles up. Anyway, now that I've made a complete mess of it, this is not how I normally handle it. Uh, but this is fantastic. It's very inexpensive. Um, if you touch a live circuit, which I doubt you ever will, uh, 110 circuit or 220 or whatever, um, you're not going to get a shock uh, in either of these. You're not going to cause a shock, you're not going to get a shock. Again, this is uh, serious. If you're pulling a lot of cable through a conduit, this is really good to have. And you, I guess you could use it for uh, uh, a stub out. And again, it's called a stub out because it stubs out at the top. Okay, and a lot of electricians will put them in for you when you're doing a, a new uh, job, your cable in low voltage. They would prefer to, to give you the stub out. I think they could charge more for it. Don't have to have it. You can really just cable just almost as fast without a stub out. Uh, but it is nice when you show up at a job site, new construction and everything else, and they have uh, conduit, stub out conduit. Now, I'm just going to tell you a story because I know you guys like stories. Okay, so I was working for a big corporation. Uh, Burlington Air Express and their IT department, man, they had the best IT department I ever saw. And it was a really good company to work for. No longer around, sorry to say. But when I worked there, uh, I was responsible for 200 locations throughout the U.S. And so um, I had to put in a, uh, I had a cable, a building on an airport. And so when I was talking to the airport manager and everything else, and I said, okay, we're going to cable, we're going to do this, or anything else. And he says, oh, we got special codes. And I said, okay. Now remember, this is a freight company, so we have a freight building here with about five or six offices, ten offices at the most. All employees are going to be in here, so it's not the main airport building. Uh, 
but I did design the cabling for Toledo Airport there. But anyway, make a long story short. Long story short, yeah, let's do that. Um, uh, when I asked him, I said, uh, what are your special rules? And he says, everything has to be in conduit from the phone room all the way to the phone jack has to be in conduit. And I said, well, nowhere else in the country it's like that. I said, I've cabled uh, you know, a lot of airports, a lot of uh, freight facilities, things like that, or designed the cabling and contracted for it. And he said, yeah, this is different here. And I said, yeah, that's different. I said, okay, well, I'll go find the electrical contractor, put in the conduit. And he said, oh, well, we only, use, we only allow one electrical contractor to put in our conduit on our facilities. And I said, wow, that's really strange. I said, I want to take this up with uh, the, your board. Is there possible I could talk about it? He goes, yeah, that electrical contractor is on our board. <laughs> yeah, we paid a lot of money to get conduit in that building uh, that we really didn't need. You don't need that type of conduit. Um, it's rarely you need anything like that. Maybe going through firewall. No, not maybe. You do need conduit going through firewalls. Another discussion for another day, but I thought you'd find that little thing humorous. Again, great for the stub outs. The conduit that goes up the wall, above the ceiling tiles, and stops, and you can run your cable right down that. This is the best way to do it. It's really fast. You save time. Remember, tools are meant to save time and to make you look professional. Okay, if the tool doesn't save you time, then don't use it. Okay, if it's not helping you to be more professional at a good installation, then don't use it. It's being a professional, doing a professional installation. That's some of this junk that I had seen that I had to walk in afterwards. And of course, this is for other type of things. Again, you can use it to stub out, but it's really not a stub out cable. But it's a great cable to have. And if you're an electrician, man, you should have this. This is great. Easy the fish compared to a uh, uh, metal fish tape. It also does the 90s a lot nicer and you can get leads for this, leaders for this that will bend a lot easier. Uh, subscribe please and if you like our videos and you like these products buy from us. Don't go to the local store. Help support the videos. I'll supply some more if you actually support them because it costs money to make these things and now I'm complaining. Hey my name is Jim Gibson Please subscribe and thank you for watching our video. You have a great day. Hi, this is Jim with CableSupply.com. Hi, this is Jim from CableSupply.com. Hi, this is Jim with CableSupply.com and today I'm going to show you how to cut a hole in the drywall. This is David signing out. You stay classy, Internet.